written world. Life lessons from literature. If I should die, think only this of me, that there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. There shall be in that rich earth a richer dust concealed, a dust whom England bore, shaped, made aware, gave once her flowers to love, her ways to roam, a body of England's breathing English air, washed by the rivers, blessed by sons of home. This poem of Rupert Brooks expressed the national patriotic sentiment of the First World War, full of its romanticized ideal and its unflinching support for a war that would see the death of, according to some estimates, 37 million people. It was propaganda poeticized. Not to mention, Brooke never actually fought in the war. Rupert Brooke died of blood poisoning on the 23rd of April 1915 on his way to Gallipoli. In other words, this poem was written from what researchers understand to be a secondary source, far removed from the realities of war and therefore far more likely to indulge in abstract theories that give way to ungrounded prejudices and mere opinions as opposed to the cold, harsh and brutal realities of actual war. Dolce bellum inexpertis. Lieutenant Wilfred Edward Salter Owen of the Manchester Regiment was a poet writing during the First World War. He has since been described as a war poet, but he was so much more than this. Owen feared that a German victory would obliterate the English language, so he thought, amongst other things, in order to, as he put it, save the language of Keats and Shakespeare. After suffering from what was then known as shell shock from exposure to the horrors of war, he was sent to convalesce in Craig Lockhart War Hospital near Edinburgh under the supervision of Dr. A.J. Brock. While other doctors were administering electroshock therapy, Dr. Brock believed in occupational therapy and encouraged Owen to write poetry and rediscover his creativity as a means to heal. At the hospital, Owen met Siegfried Sassoon, a fellow soldier and already established poet who had an immense impact on Owen's understanding of an approach to poetry. Here, Owen would write some of his greatest and most celebrated verse. Sassoon gave him one simple piece of advice in regards to his writing. He told him, sweat your guts out. Owen wrote his incredible poem, Greater Love, on an ancient theme, comparing, exploring and contrasting the relationship between love and war at times tender, at times satirical. This poem, in my estimation, is one of the greatest pieces of English poetry ever written. For deep down, the exploration of war is in fact an exploration of human nature and the psyche, or the human spirit. After Wilfred Owen witnessed the death of his friends, saw the broken men in the hospitals and the shadows of men fade on the battlefields, he rallied against the war and in the spring of 1918 released his short book of poems written in the hospital. The preface to the collection states, This book is not about heroes. My subject is war and the pity of war. The poetry is in the pity. In its entirety, Rupert Brooke's poem, The Soldier, is written in the form of a sonnet, as if it were somehow transcendental or a love poem. Shakespearean, Miltonian, Wordsworthian, but as if in rebellious reply, Owen crafted greater love, as if to say, transcendence, love, no. This is how a love poem, with all of its contradictions, should be written. He writes, Red lips are not so red as a stained stones kissed by the English dead. Kindness of wooed and wooer seems shame to their love pure. O oh love, your eyes lose lore when I behold eyes blinded in my stead. Your slender attitude trembles not exquisite like limbs knife skewed, rolling and rolling there where God seems not to care till the fierce love they bear cramps them in death's extreme decrepitude. Your voice sings not so soft, though even as wind murmuring through rafted loft. Your dear voice is not dear, gentle and evening clear as theirs whom none now hear now earth has stopped their piteous mouths that coughed. Heart, you were never hot, nor large, nor full like hearts made great with shot. And though your hand be pale, paler are all which trail your cross through flame and hail. Weep, you may weep, for you may touch them not.
the written world. Life lessons from literature.